Today, we have our ACBC Master Trainer, Mr. Jitendra Vyas with us. He is basically a structural engineer and also he has a PG diploma in urban planning and development. He is a trainer and evaluator for Biha Council. He has been practicing in green building sector as an energy consultant. He is an expert in health, institutional and housing projects. He has trained professionals, students and government officials across the country on ACBC and handled more than 150 sessions across India. We are extremely thankful to you, sir, for your presence here. I welcome Mr. Jitendra Vyas for the session. Over to you, sir. Uh, so, uh, uh, today we are going to understand uh, uh, simulation exercise. Uh, simulation exercise means uh, generating computer models of buildings which are going to be built in our state. Uh, with the help of uh, the software, we would be having a new knowledge as well as a skill set. The, the knowledge will be an addition to the previous knowledge what we have understood from our engineering or architecture colleges. And in addition to that, uh, the, the, the knowledge uh, that will be you have just seen yesterday as well. And uh, the knowledge uh, which will be having a little uh, te new technical terms in terms of energy conservation, though it's a part of our building. Uh, uh, physics only but uh, we haven't practiced it uh, as a structural engineer i never practiced those uh, initial form of physics as well as the initial material technology uh, then uh, after some time you realize when you have to refine yourself uh, in terms of designing you need to have a new a new concept but those are not exactly new concepts whatever we have uh, been overlooked um, on some uh, grounds that has been uh, again uh, came back to our, our life so uh, this uh, exercise uh, would be probably uh, not on the basically on the knowledge, but uh, more on the skill set. But to acquire, uh, just to sync with the knowledge and the skill set, there is a little uh, a protocol is needed. So that protocol, uh, you must have uh, uh, listened to my previous speaker yesterday. And now uh, I'm going to uh, add on something more about that knowledge as well as uh, how to connect that with the skill set. And Ultimately, what is the outcome of that skill set that should also be known to us? Because until unless we just envisage that why we are learning uh, this new exercise or why it is coming to our life, uh, as well as uh, what is the outcome of all this uh, uh, the the wasting or investing of our hours into this uh, new uh, provisions. So for the sake of that, we have to be a little patient about the new things which are coming in our way. But at last, what is the ultimate outcome is that that I would like to tell you that it's a, a techno socio economy uh, legal uh, aspect is there. So legal aspect means it is a compliable thing and it would be mandatory and it has been mandatory in Kerala and may, many part of the uh, country. The knowledge which is going to be shared today can be applied not in uh, our state of Kerala, but it can be applied. Uh, the similar, very quite similar knowledge can be applied to any part of the country, and not only country, uh, but the entire globe. So the knowledge which we are going to understand, which we are going to share with you, us, uh, the experience of yours, and uh, the the practice which I have done in last decade for the energy conservation, will be merged in a in a form that we will form a binding forever that can that that can lead uh, the things in in a very right way. So what are those right ways? Right ways is basically the mandatory provision uh, that makes uh, ourselves bind to practice in such a way that uh, the, the threshold limits provided in the codes, national codes, as well as uh, IS codes, Bureau of Indian Standards codes, as well as the Energy Conservation Code. All these compliable uh, things should be in place, proper place, and the procedure adopted in these codes should be uh, uh, well, well understood by us. So, uh, our target is not to complete the code today because it is a uh, uh, incremental exercise. The cascading effect of uh, knowledge uh, would be there. Uh, yesterday we have just gone through. Just I would like to uh, see the agenda of yesterday's that uh, you must have uh, most likely that all of you have first uh, attended yesterday's session. Those who have not attended the yesterday's session shouldn't bother for that. We will be having a, a little review of many things. Uh, but we'll not go into very much detail I mean, about the uh, Sebi, you probably you have to uh, mute your mic. Uh, somebody's mic is on. Please uh, mute your mic. 
Uh, thing like you can work it out that uh, 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 campus of say something like uh, 10 lakh square feet of construction in a five star hotel and uh, sprawling in something like 20 acres of land, uh, considering a big one. The, the electricity cost, if it is considered to be in northern uh, uh, states of India, like uh, Madhya Pradesh, I consider for it is a, for a commercial, it is 10 rupees to a unit, uh, so that. Uh, it comes out to be from 1 crore rupees to 3 crore rupees every year, the electricity bill I'm talking about. So if you provide uh, the relief to your uh, uh, occupant, then it would be a uh, handsome. The 10 to 30% uh, yeah. is on a, on a, on a uh, modest range, but it could be as a high as 50% as well. So for end user, it is like that. For external lighting, 5 to 10% can be observed with the help of what we are going to understand uh, today. 
uh, internal lighting 15 to 20 percent saving could be there and non processed loads could be uh, from 20 to 30 percent and thermal comfort utilities would be uh, higher than 40 to 60 percent now new technologies are coming uh, on your way uh, because in, in terms of designing buildings we don't consider these aspects uh, in, in in our uh, consideration so what is that that we also uh, work out uh, sometimes i tried to show you the latest uh, of the latest slides which are being displayed for our training refresher training around a month back so based on that thing we are just discussing on the very latest uh, information so energy efficiency performance levels are considered to be in three categories for the energy conservation uh, building code uh, incremental levels uh, these these are benchmarks are ecbc ecbc plus and super ecbc ECBC, with, by virtue of adopting ECBC, around 25% of the save, minimum energy saving can be obtained over a conventional building. Convention building means the buildings which are being practiced uh, with the cautious uh, nature of uh, generating that energy efficiency over and above that uh, this thing can be generated. I'm not talking about the, uh, the buildings which are being uh, generated uh, without any conscious effort uh, for, for making energy efficiency. So any energy efficient building over and above ECBC could be saving around 25% of energy. And you, you will work it out that uh, whenever we go to any uh, automobile showroom, we immediately ask what is the cost of the vehicle. And secondly, immediately we ask that what is the average of that vehicle. So every time we uh, always ask what is the life cycle cost of that vehicle. But in case of buildings, we rarely or uh, rather never ask for uh, the life cycle cost of the building that what would be the uh, the the the, uh, the running cost of the building which is almost three times of the cost of the uh, construction of building so we always talk uh, talk about what is the per square foot cost or per square meter or per yard uh, cost of the building but we rarely or never cost about uh, talk about the, uh, uh, the the energy efficiency cost so in case of a ecbc plus building uh, that you just understood yesterday, but I will uh, repeat it also sometimes, but uh, uh, it will be uh, uh, almost 35% instead of 25%. And uh, in case of super ECBC building, it could be as high as 50% bare minimum, this saying minimum energy saving. So over a conventional building, conventional building is, means buildings which are being trialed uh, these days. So uh, the code will be applicable in all, all type of buildings. Uh, you must have understood that it could be, be, be it a central government building, a state government building, municipal corporation, ULB buildings, or it could be uh, 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 any developing authority building, or it could be a private building, it could be a corporate building, it could be any any type of building. If it, that the threshold limit of connected load uh, is there, then it will be worked out on that. So the threshold limit is somewhere uh, sometimes it is 100 kilowatt uh, connected load or 50 kilowatt depending on the various states. So uh, it, it is a change in figure. So uh, all building typology of hospitality like a star hotels or even no star hotels like lodging uh, that can also be covered if uh, lodges also have got these days uh, around 25 air conditioners with them. So uh, based on that thing, you can understand that every every uh, sizable amount of building that is covered under uh, the ECBC code. In case of, uh, and I told you that all all sort of it could be a PSU building or any any type of building. Okay, it could be a port trust building or anything building which is which is uh, uh, in the India. So uh, if you con consider that uh, not only the hospital building but the healthcare building of hospital of any nature or outpatient OPD department buildings or assembly buildings of multiplexes or theaters or a building used for transport services. So it could be a uh, interstate bus terminus or it could be an airport or it, it could be something like a new upcoming railway station or any building associated with the railway station. What you see in the uh, Singapore or uh, that has been constructed in the Gandhi Nagar seven star uh, five star hotel of Leela uh, on the Gandhi Nagar railway station. So uh, railway station itself. OK, just uh, on the railway station that is there. So all those buildings will be covered uh, into this thing. All sort of business houses. Business means doesn't mean that uh, uh, the uh, the commercial nature, like uh, uh, even in the, the new uh, upcoming parliament parliament building, that also transact business. So any any assembly building of any nature, it could be a government building or a secretariat building. Uh, all all buildings of government, private, corporate, that will be covered under this thing. So uh, of uh, of any nature, but uh, something around ten thousand square meter construction area building which can be covered into the ECPC code or even the smaller also even 1000 square meter building can also be covered educational type like college buildings uh, it could be private college uh, in in my city i have got almost uh, 12 uh, private universities in in town in my town okay so 
and there is one government university so uh, all 13 universities uh, and their extension if any of any nature that will be covered under the ecbc code not at my place but at, at your place also that is kerala so institutional building of any nature or school building or shopping complexes malls stand alone retails uh, open gallery malls supermarkets all these are covered or mixed mode of all these things uh, combination of any on uh, any one of the buildings can be covered into this cbc code and this will be a mandatory exercise so compliance approach that will be accounted i am not going into very much detail about this just i'll try to focus you the new technologies which are coming our way that is the epi ratio uh, the, the buildings will be uh, trialed under the category of uh, of a new term that is called energy performance index ratio epi ratio energy i am just repeating it multiple times so that you can learn it also so uh, by being a, a student of learning a new technique we should be uh, always re ready with our student as yes, that uh, that that we repeat the new terminologies by our uh, tongue so that it gets uh, uh, acclimatized to our uh, body uh, to mind also so the new terminology which will come our way uh, multiple times will be epi ratio so energy performance index ratio i'm just saying that uh, it multiple times so that it uh, we get familiar with the new terms okay so epi ratio uh, that has been uh, uh, just set it is also a fluctuating one because uh, all the all the efficiencies are uh, uh, measured on a time scale so whatever that was efficient 10 years back it's not uh, uh, efficient one these days so benchmarking is always a fluctuating uh, thing but uh, for for a while if you just understand that uh, the the if a, uh, around 145 different uh, buildings of uh, one shift building one shift building means uh, 9 to 6 kind of building 9 to 5 kind of building and there could be 55 buildings of three shift buildings or 88 uh, buildings of public sector buildings that is PSU buildings, 224 of private sector buildings were trialed with this much amount of cumulative area of 145 buildings, so 16,000 square meter, something like that. And then cumulatively, there are, there are total uh, energy consumption was measured uh, in terms of kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour is a technical term in terms of electricity measurement, consumption measurement. Uh, in, in our usual term, we call it units, number of units. So, uh, around 20 lakhs 92,364 units were consumed in uh, 145 buildings in a year uh, or comprises of uh, something like 16,000 square meter. So uh, if you divide this number of units uh, to the floor area, the square meter, so it will give you consumption per square meter per year. This is for the in annual energy, so it's for entire year. If you divide this 20 lakhs by this 16,000, then it comes out to be 149. 149 units per meter square per year. That's so simple the total consumption divided by the uh, square meter area so it comes out to be uh, unit consumption per square meter area per year so 149 149 is an average for office shift building so they said that suppose this is a, uh, these buildings are energy efficient one then the averagely our uh, threshold limit of consumption of upcoming new office building of one shift building should not be more than 149 so this is the average you can call it now any building which is which is consuming lesser than that like uh, who has got a lesser epi will be considered as more efficient one so any building who is consuming uh, irrespective of their size just uh, annual energy consumption divided by the the square meter of the uh, proposed building that if that gives the figure of lesser than 149 or equivalent to 149 that building is going to be permissible now how a building which is not there in the ground which is not in the shape it is already in the laptop it is on the drawing board itself how we can ascertain that the building is going to consume this much amount of uh, electricity per square meter uh, in a year at a, at a particular geographical location it could be kotiam it could be hyderabad it could be Srinagar. so how that can be worked out so today is our exercise to understand that uh, in a proposed building how we can ascertain that this will be the probable consumption and uh, just uh, i would like to reassure that if you provide proper information to the software it is as good as around two to five percent uh, plus minus of uh, estimation so it's that precise software that we are going to understand today and it's a freeware <laughs> the beauty is that so uh, uh, hopefully if you are getting me uh, uh, that what we are going to learn today uh, a bit of that has been uh, shown on this side uh, this uh, slide okay for this similarly for three shift building it is coming out to be because it is working three times almost or two and a half times then uh, this this would be the consumption okay and apart from that public sector building there's uh, they are not very much uh, mm, mm, air conditioned so their benchmarking will be a little lesser 
Then private sector building, like corporate buildings, they got this much amount of figure. And for green buildings, which you usually observe that the buildings are certified greens or uh, equivalent to that, then the consumption is very, very less. So that is why people go for the green building because their uh, operational costs are very minimal as compared to the conventional building. So in case of hospitals, or multi especially hospital, it's about 378 for government hospital because government hospital have got minimal infrastructure sometimes. So it is 88 hotels, luxury hotels, 279 shopping malls, 252. These are the benchmarking figures or indices you can call it, but these are fluctuating and periodically by the end of five, every five years they are reviewed. So <clears throat> they are going to reduce. So. Uh, So the project team usually which was uh, comprised of architects, civil engineers and MPP consultants. Uh, that is called mechanical, electrical and plumbing consultant and fire also. So uh, in addition to that, one more guy will be uh, added to the team and uh, the, the, the incorporation of this team new team member would be a mandatory exercise. The ECBC expert, it could be uh, the, the person could be in house or it could be an outsourced consultant. So based on this information, uh, we will like to go ahead that uh, all the responsibilities of all the uh, uh, stakeholders like architects, HVAC consultant, lighting consultant, plumbing consultant, electrical energy consultant that will be on board from initially from the design itself. OK. So. Uh, uh, so building envelope uh, compliance approach will comprise of two major components things that you understood yesterday as well. Just I'm repeating for those who are new entrants, but will not take much time over here. The mandatory requirements are those requir requirements that every requirement of which is mentioned in this category applied to the applicable uh, clause, not the all clauses. All the applicable clauses should be uh, strictly followed. Not even a single one can be missed out. All the applicable clauses which have been mentioned in the mandatory requirement and then if you miss out, even your building is so much, uh, even two times energy efficient, your building will not be uh, granting building permit. Okay, so mandatory requirements means literal mandatory requirements. And prescriptive requirement means those uh, requirements which are given to for the sake of understanding of that. If you provide these things, then your building will be uh, much more efficient. So uh, the requirement uh, belonging to fenestration, that is the transparent and translucent uh, vertical part, uh, or uh, even the skylight also. Uh, opaque construction means that is the wall kind of a thing. Wall could be comprised of many, many parameters that we're going to understand. The daylighting, the building envelope ceiling, and then in the prescriptive requirement, again, roof, opaque wall, vertical fenestration, and skylights. All those parameters which you understood a little earlier, I'm just repeating them. So in case of uh, roof, uh, opaque construction, uh, roof, wall, and floors have to be understood. Like in case of if this is a roof, these are the walls. Okay, and suppose this is a basement, uh, then uh, this bottom uh, floor of the basement is also uh, opaque construction. And then suppose this is a uh, suppose this is a garage kind of a thing. Then the garage roof can also uh, leak out the in inside uh, heat or inside cold to outside. So in this case, the, this uh, floor will also consider as an opaque construction. In case of a uh, 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 window door and the skylight that we have already understood that uh, these are called and uh, these terminologies are called fenestrations. So climate and microclimate is also very much understood regarding the temperature, humidity, solar insulation, wind speed, directions, landforms, vegetations, water bodies, open spaces. All these uh, surrounding of a building matters a lot uh, regarding the uh, making a comfort inside the building. So uh, apart from that, the building orientation, the, the, the manner in which your building is placed on the ground, uh, the orienting towards north, west or south, that matters a lot at what, how much that matters that we are going to see uh, work with the help of software today. Uh, building uh, envelope uh, component design in terms of area orientation, tilt of the building and their facade like uh, uh, projection of chajas kind of a thing. Many other things can be understood by, by with the help of software as well as uh, from the from the theory. And the building material specifications you talk about that the insulating properties of every building component. It could be brick. We are going to uh, see it in detail uh, in the next slides. So uh, heat gain uh, usually that comes from the roof uh, because of solar insulation. Uh, and uh, apart from that, uh, heat gain through wall you can see the wall get heated up from the outside because of sun or because of the ambient temperature. If sun is directly not uh, touching to the <coughs> 
outside uh, uh, this uh, vertical wall then the embedded temperature can also uh, give heat to toward the inside okay apart from that the human body who re conti continuously averagely rate around 100 watt uh, bulb kind of uh, heat from uh, uh, all over the skin so um, uh, if you have any anybody touch the 100 watt uh, lit lamp then uh, whatever whatever amount of that heat that you just uh, feel at the your palm uh, this very same equivalent amount of heat is being radiated from our body almost throughout uh, throughout our life Okay, it ranges from 70 watt to 740 watt, depending on the uh, many other factors. So, uh, because it has been spread to our uh, the entire body mass of say five feet, uh, front, back, and sides, and something like, so that the the dissemination of the heat is not uh, uh, felt uh, that much. That is that is we felt on the touching a uh, 100 watt uh, uh, incandescent bulb. Uh, then uh, there could be uh, air. Uh, Infiltration. There could be leakages. There could be uh, uh, heat gain from the uh, glass, or there could be direct sunlight uh, that is uh, passing from outside to inside. Then the AC cooling uh, uh, also gives you uh, the 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 uh, negative effect of heat uh, heat gain inside that. It cools out the the entire spectrum. But whatever the heat gain is uh, received uh, from this envelope as well as from the occupants, all that has to be mitigated from this uh, AC. And AC consumes a lot of power, and the power goes on if we do not provide an adequate amount of insulation to all these parameters. So uh, first of all, we will concentrate on the opaque construction. Opaque construction-wise, if you see the conduction, convection, and radiations are the theme, uh, three mode of heat transfer. It is being affected by the thermal properties of material and effective of the insulation. That is conduction. Conduction is travel of heat from uh, one place to another uh, through a solid medium. In case of convection, it is uh, uh, electromagnetic waves uh, are needed, and in case of that, uh, the the material should be either liquid or in the gaseous form. The solid cannot be having a convection effect, and the radiation is basically it doesn't re uh, require any sort of medium. Uh, the the uh, the, the heat which we receive from the sun is traveled through vacuum and the vacuum doesn't have any kind of a substance like a solid case or a <clears throat> liquid. So radiation is another phenomena by virtue of that you get the heat. So uh, uh, ECBC role to regulate the heat in case of conduction is basically U factors. U factors means uh, conductance factors and R values, resistance values of the roof and wall materials. So all your Whatever we have understood in architecture and engineering college so far regarding the construction of uh, uh, four inches wall or like you can call it 100 mm uh, thickness wall of uh, open butta brick or flash brick or it could be uh, a different variety of stone uh, cladding or something like that. Uh, irrespective of uh, the, these values, we have just uh, envisaged that. So we are, our BOQs, our specifications of our our. our <coughs> Uh, SOR, SOR stands for, I'm just, uh, 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 you must be aware of all these terminologies many, many times, but some of you could not be uh, familiar with any of the terminologies. So schedule of rates is called SOR. So all the materials that has been mentioned so far will be having a paradigm shift after the implementation of TBC in any of these streams. So there will be new additions, entirely new change of materials and other things will be incorporated. And your new design, your new BOQ, your new SOR will comprise of all these, and uh, your uh, tender conditions are will comprise of all the new things which are uh, going to be displayed uh, today and what else that has been displayed yesterday. So what those values are, only technical people can understand, and we'll just uh, see in detail that what, what can be done for that. In case of convection, uh, uh, building envelope ceiling requirement would be there in case of radiation, R values of roof and uh, cool roofs will be required. So what those are there, we'll just try to understand. The conductivity uh, is basically, uh, its unit is watt per meter Kelvin, and the resistivity is meter Kelvin per watt. It's just a reciprocal of this thing, one of one by K is uh, R, and one, of, one by R is called K. So resistance value uh, is uh, calibrated in terms of uh, uh, watt per meter square Kelvin, and thickness of uh, material is very much important to that. And conductance uh, with a single layer and multiple layer is called U factor. Single layer is called U value, and multiple layer of these construction is called U factor. Just uh, it could be uh, just uh, not understandable uh, things uh, in, in your way to understand the, this learning exercise. But after some time, you will just come across to these things with examples so that you will be realizing that it is very easy to understand. 
so for any building material it could be a brick it could be ac block or it could be a stone material or something like if you would like to know the resistance of uh, heat resistance of this uh, this material then you have to just find out the thickness in terms of meters thickness of material in meters thermal conductivity of material uh, which is which can be uh, had from google or it can be had from uh, the the code itself and then if you just have got a multiple uh, layers like it could be a plaster thickness of inside or it's a gypsum plaster of 12 mm inside and then there could be uh, something like a uh, 100 mm thick jo hai uh, your ac block and then uh, insulation and then there could be a outside wall of say something like a uh, open patta brick or there could be a plaster or it could be a stone cladding or it could be a uh, something like a uh, acp or something like that that this multiple layering of walling is called uh, the the uh, assembly of uh, Uh, volume it so assembly uh, thermal resistance can be worked out very well with the help of thickness of that particular layer divided by thermal constant of that plaster which if some plaster has got a different thermal constant ac block has a different uh, constant and all so you just keep on adding all that thing that summation of that will pro- provide you r total uh, the resistance total of the entire assembly so uh, one upon that is called the u factor of that uh, building component so there are variety of things are available uh, if you can just discuss and understand that uh, uh, in warm and humid zone the the opaque assembly u factor the for walling assembly the u factor should not exceed 0.40 in case of a no star hotel it can uh, be as high as 0.63 okay so for this region this u factor should not be more than that so your wall assembly should be like that that whatever the conventional way of wall that you have, you have been providing that will not work with the help of uh, prescriptive comment but in case of a whole building performance it, that can work but provided you provide some other extra efforts in terms of money for selecting a better hvac control unit or something like that i am i am talking too much technical sometimes to so you please try to ignore the extra things which are not uh, occupying your mind so just ignore that whatever that is being uh, brought to your attention just focus on that we'll just uh, march out with many many new terminologies and new things and we'll just form a, a, a colosseum of all that thing and we'll understand in detail uh, there is no problem for that once we go through the software you will just find it out that it's a uh, very very easy to understand that uh, uh, all these components are very well understood in terms of in the practical things which you are do at your uh, life and you just fed that information to the software all these these terminologies will become very very familiar so in case of a uh, opaque assembly prescriptive requirement this warp and humid this is this is the range for the ecbc plus and it's for uh, super ecbc so this is, you will see that it's a very very efficient system is being provided instead of a, a conventional system the conventional system has got something like 1.4 1.5 Uh, uh u value uh, watt per meter square and uh, for super ecbc is is, is almost uh, one fourth or one sixth kind of uh, uh, thermal conductance so you have to change the entire pulling material so uh, the the thermal constant uh, uh, that has been mentioned over here uh, uh, for the for the various uh, building materials that could be cement board fiber cement board gypsum plaster plywood oriented shed boards there could be as good as uh, many many materials uh, the new and renewable energy uh, of government of us provides you almost 750 different type of walling that can be practically applied to your uh, house with the help of uh, to to with the, with the native material combinations also to to a certain uh, desired result of ecbc uh, threshold limits hopefully uh, you are sync with me uh, Uh, as i have started a little technical it could be a uh, little technish to understand but uh, slowly i'm assuring you that you'll uh, you'll understand each and everything in the, in the, with the, by your heart uh, after a couple of minutes so there could be a, a typical clay fired uh, bricks or combination of solid bricks and blocks with the help of uh, non fired uh, flag g fly ash cement concrete ac block clc calcium silicate calcium uh, cement stabilized earth block so there there are variety of different type of uh, uh, walling material which are available uh, depending on the uh, availability of these uh, additional items like uh, we have got a import amount of fly ash at uh, ntpc plants or it could be suppose in case of a raipur where there is a there are lots of steel plants and there are flag uh, ashes available so uh, there are variety of bricks can be uh, generated with that otherwise a conventional brick is basically open but fabric 
So non-homogeneous walling technologies could be a combination of uh, different material, like in case of a conventional 230 mm uh, non-modular brick uh, wall is something like uh, it has got a plaster inside, plaster outside. Red trap brick uh, bond is something like this. And then <coughs> you will work it out that it could be a sheeting outside, it could be a sandwich pattern of uh, iron member, and there could be a, a glass pool kind of pattern inside, or there could be inside there is a, a smooth finish uh, uh, steel plate. So there could be a factory finish building. Uh, this could be a different kind of a, uh, filling of various, uh, various other kind of material. So there are very many different type of reinforced EPS core kind of a thing, or this could be a ex extruded polystyrene or expanded polystyrene, extruded polystyrene or expanded polystyrene. The difference is that that uh, the density of extruded polystyrene is more than the expanded polystyrene. The expanded polystyrene is very simple to answer. That is called thermocolin or local language. But if there is a technical like uh, what we have got a botanical name for our uh, plants. Also, it's very quite similar that the, the, whatever we understand in terms of la our local language, the technical uh, language could be a different. A different. So solar reflectance to the roof is also worked out and uh, because of the subcoating with the help of paints or uh, putting some tiles, uh, solar reflective tiles, this uh, uh, solar heat gain can be reduced to a certain extent. So requirement for prescriptive is to have a minimum R value, okay, or maximum U factor. These things should be considered in while. So for selecting any material, whatever the limit value of the choosing of material in terms of U factor, of that particular assembly. Factors is for always for assembly. Assembly is basically combination of multiple layers of various building components. So that is there. Solar reflectance and emittance of the core cool roof, their, their values have been mentioned in the code. So what kind of values that has been given? So for warm and humid zone, this is the assembly of U factor that has been mentioned for ECBC and for ECBC plus. So uh, you, you have to work it out that how that 0.33 comes out. Otherwise, we are uh, all our technocrats, so we understand all these things in a very much detail that uh, these values can be calculated with the help of very arithmetical simple formulas or very simple procedures. Uh, nothing, the thing of rocket science, nothing like Kani's theorem or something like that that is being practiced over here. And vegetated and cool roof, we can just see that in accordance to the various codal provisions, these cool roofs are being generated. In case of vertical fenestration, because we have to just uh, see to the uh, to the simulation part, so we'll just uh, marching ahead, which we have understood yesterday. So in case of uh, uh, glaze unit, you will just see that uh, inside outside there is a temperature difference, and because of the solar radiation, because of the ambient heat transfer, uh, that that uh, uh, solar heat gain coefficient is being uh, observed. And solar heat gain coefficient is a uh, is a is a term which is being uh, used that how much the glass of administration is absorbing light uh, or the heat from outside. And uh, the, in the earlier version, this uh, uh, solar coefficient was given along with the glass and everything. Shading, sorry, shading coefficient was uh, given in, in, in terms of earlier uh, version of a glass. So suppose you've got a uh, supply of previous two, three years, uh, or five years old produced any any material, then it that might be comprises of a new term that is called shading coefficient. If you multiply it by uh, 0.87, that the uh, solar heat gain coefficient can be worked out. Otherwise, nowadays all materials which are translucent, be it polycarbonate or fiberglass or anything, or even glass, that uh, comprises this information of SSGC. So uh, hope uh, you have got uh, uh, some idea about this thing. Uh, visual light transmittance, if you just make the uh, glass uh, with the help of a dark film, then the heat will not be uh, entered so much. But again, the problem will arise that uh, the ample amount of daylight will not come inside the building. So there should be optimization between the, uh, the, the, the darkness or uh, having a tint of the film in certain way that the uh, uh, minimum amount of uh, visual light transmittance is permitted uh, through that glass. And then over and over, that is, uh, the the radiation is cut because of that tint or uh, film. So uh, this is the consideration. So again, one more term that is visual light transmittance VLT, and that VLT limit is also provided that this much amount of VLT should be there uh, through that uh, glass or something like that. Okay. So if you come 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 to the ECB requirement overview, we have just seen that the size and orientation that matters, shading devices that matters, the chajjal and other thing, and glazing properties. U factor SSGC VLT that you have seen already. 
and then you'll see the uh, prescriptive requirement in terms of various other factors of SHGC for various kind of buildings uh, in, in various terms. So whatever the maximum amount of, uh, in an ideal condition, 40% more than 40% window area should not be there in the entire gross wall area. So th this is a, a advisory limit. So advisory, advisory limit is prescriptive requirement, you can call it. Okay, and the, the tilt of that, uh, uh, any any uh, orientation, uh, 45 percent or VLT should not be uh, less than 27 percent of the light which is falling on the uh, window. That at least 27 percent should be passed inside the building. So all these are prescriptive requirements. So uh, there are certain exemptions also. If you go through the exemptions, then we can uh, work it out in detail. So these would be the things which will be having. If you got any question in, uh, in mind, then that could be resolved in terms of exemptions that if suppose this happened in that particular case, what will happen in that case? All those things have been described very well in the code. And uh, once somebody goes through these languages, then uh, the, those questions can be answered. Again, I would like to reiterate uh, to every one of you. I would urge you, I would request you that if you have got any small questions, suggestion, experience sharing or, or any doubt or anything to say, kindly jot it down on a piece of paper. Uh, it could be one or multiple questions. Uh, suggestions, narrations, and you are more than welcome to provide any information from your side to this forum uh, today onwards. Uh, that uh, if you got some inclination, if you would, if you would like to make any contribution, even in terms of making a question, that is also a noble contribution for this cause. So I would uh, request you all of you that you just turn down on the piece of paper and questions by 4:30 to 4:45, and even extend it a little bit and we'll, we would like to answer each and every question or a, any anything which comes from your side so uh, i would request that you whatever that comes in your mind just keep on uh, your most of the questions will be answered in the subsequent slides or procedures but irrespective of that if anything remains or if you'd like to uh, would like to highlight something then you are more than welcome to always ask question today or onwards uh, regarding anything and uh, your ECBC cell or EMC would be happy to answer, including me, happy to answer any of your queries. So uh, I would I would request you once again for that. So again, exceptions and everything because that question comes in mind. Suppose this happens, then suppose that that happens, so that all all that already have uh, mentioned over here. So exemptions are uh, narration that has been given, and uh, uh, there are certain amount of resource material which is being shared from uh, uh, EMC to you. Uh, you kindly go through on, on a on a nutshell basis, cover to cover basis, detail mode in subsequent uh, time of yours. So uh, uh, the Kerala state ECBC code that is being shared to you on email, or it, if it is not, then it will be shared to you. Uh, apart from that, the national revised code of 2020 uh, that is also being shared. I have tried to share you some of the uh, different uh, other resource tables and everything. Uh, so <coughs> the, all those things are usually everything is available in the in the uh, public domain or that can be googled out. But what to search in the Google that is the bigger task. So uh, we would like to share all those informations which are being uh, useful to you and in their day to day task of designing a building or even constructing the buildings or making the tender forms. The, all this information will be very, very helpful and that, that will be required. That will be a must kind of a thing. So all the resource material will be shared to you uh, today as well as in subsequent time whenever any update comes. So uh, this equivalent SEC factor uh, that has to be worked out, the software does it all. Uh, it's very easy to understand with the help of software. But uh, uh, what software does, you have to provide information to the software. Either you uh, locate your uh, building uh, location in terms of uh, name of the city, if it is not there, then sometimes the software provides you information to provide latitude and longitude to your place. And uh, as we see that the Kerala state falls into the uh, uh, zone of say something like 8.5 latitude north to something like maximum of 13. Okay, so this is the latitude position of Kerala. The each and every state has been mentioned according to that. So our table also comprises the information to be related in terms of latitudes. So uh, like you see that uh, uh, Coefficient of shading equivalent factors for latitude greater than uh, 15 degree north. So if you see that uh, the shading equivalent factor C3 multiplied by PF cube plus C2 multiplied by PF square plus C1 into C, uh, PF plus uh, constant. So all these CO, the C0, C1, C2, C3 are mentioned over here. Nothing. You have to refer, refer it. So if you got a 
uh, a chajja kind of a thing that is called overhang you have to refer to this table if you got a uh, only a vertical fins uh, around your uh, windows so in, in that case you have to refer this if you got a combination of that you have to refer that but wisely choose the proper table so if kerala is ranging between 8.5 uh, degree uh, north uh, latitude to 13.5 then this table will not be applicable latitude for greater than equivalent to 15 degrees so uh, above than andhra and uh, to the north this table will be equivalent but for kerala next table will be there so for latitude less than 15 degrees so this table will be applicable so how to choose a table that is i am showing you how to read a table is a uh, uh, little a little deeper but how to choose a table so for kerala this table would be applicable okay so for any state for which you are working for if you are working for shillong if you are working for uh, ajmer if you are working for something then these these uh, uh, tables have to be uh, carefully chosen okay and then again this uh, this factor of uh, latitude is always there in every table apart from that alternative method to choose the ssgc is unshaded ssgc then shaded ssgc shaded means it is a having a chajja or fins kind of a thing or different in the SSGC can be worked out in both cases that how much the effectiveness of a chajja. So you can design a chajja. So there are various chajja design softwares also there. In case of our big software, which we are going to understand today, in addition to that, there could be a different uh, chajja baking software. So heat loss could be through glazing. Heat uh, from here it is through glazing. It is through frame. Like if it is an aluminum frame, then the, again heat loss is there. If it is a wooden one, then the heat loss would be minimal. If it is a uh, UPVC, then it will be different. So uh, in case of the skylight, the maximum U factor that is 4.25. In case of wall, it is hardly uh, 0.4. But in case of roof, because the roof are directly connected to uh, sun, so more uh, U factor uh, value is permitted. So almost four times, ten times of the walling unit, the heat is ga uh, gained through the through the roof. So if you uh, makes such a building that doesn't get uh, heated uh, environment from the top uh, or from the roof, then more amount of insulation can be provided over here. So from for joints, for openings and uh, for sill that you just understood yesterday as well. So all these things has to be care, taken care in a judicious form. So there is another method that you must have understood the thread off method. Thread off method is basically it is on, applicable only for the building envelop and then if a combination of uh, certain building materials which are not permissible under the prescriptive method of regular mode, this trade off method pro provide you that if your you one or two or three building components are failing in the in the uh, uh, prescriptive norms, then if a collective entire uh, building components of building envelope uh, that that is uh, under the threshold limit of uh, permissible limit under the trade off method, then that that building will be permitted to construct. But these uh, prescriptive requirement and trade-off methods are basically required for almost number of buildings. Rest 80 to 85, 90% buildings will be trialed only on only on the simulation which we are focusing today. So can we skip these trade-off methods and prescriptive methods for a sake of understanding, for a sake of working? This this should be understood well. But this will be a <coughs> this calculation of this much. Uh, detailed uh, arithmetic calculation this is the arithmetic calculation huh? so don't bother for that that is a integration or differentiation or some other uh, boolean algebra is there it's a merely arithmetic calculation of multiplying two or three component adding them so this is very uh, small uh, formula looks big so don't bother for that but we are not going to that so uh, uh, just uh, not going into the domain of detailing of these trade-off method is something a simulation method which is much more workable for 85 percent cases of building that should be there so what is the basic difference between the prescriptive method as well as simulation method simulation prescriptive method is a paper pencil and calculator method okay as 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 maximum as something like you can call it uh, uh, excel method but in case of a simulation that detailed new software apart from autocad or other state pro new software will be required and those uh, uh, modeling on those softwares will be a must to have seeking a building permit uh, under the ecdc so that we would like to understand so trade off method is not that much uh, important to us all these factors and calculations are there basic calculations are provided in the national code you can go through that if you have got any problem it's very simple arithmetic calculations so you can go through that and that can be done apart from that daylight extent factor calculations are also given there uh, daylight extent factor we would like to understand after 2 p.m today because uh, we'll be having another software for daylight simulation 
and we'll understand that at that time we'll try to understand them. so hopefully uh, up till now uh, what we have seen uh, that uh, any any kind of prescriptive method that is required to be fulfilled for the requirement of uh, uh, granting a permit to be constructed uh, in, a, in a state under ecbc uh, there are certain processes there are certain values under which that material has to be chosen the orientation and everything has to be chosen but in case of a uh, total uh, totally uh, evaluating a building along with all these component putting together and having the optimization pattern of uh, uh, software uh, interdependent uh, mutual calculations can be had with the help of uh, 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 simulation software so the simulation software i tried to uh, figure it out for you is a, a freeware otherwise there are some uh, paid software also and paying is something like that comes in dollars and then converting dollars into rupees uh, that becomes hell of the things for us and sometimes there are not perpetual they are yearly you have to uh, pay them so instead of that whatever that is widely acceptable software worldwide if you that is not only for the kerala state but the software which is applicable for entire globe which is very much popular and that has been provided to you from the department of energy government of us so it's a government official us software which is freely downloadable and then you can download it with the help of a <coughs> uh simple uh, google search that is called uh, doe2.com slash equest so equest is the software which we are going to understand so let me let me figure it out i'll just uh, change screen from here pardon me while i'm changing screen from one place to another because uh, this requires a little a little time to work it so uh, i'm just uh, moving ahead with another uh, screen so equest is very easily uh, uh, downloadable very easily uh, uh, operable and very easily uh, acceptable by every government uh, worldwide to have a simulation for a upcoming building okay so uh, i told you the link otherwise i'll just put in the chat box also a little later uh, and you would be able to download it apart from that uh, uh, the the software requires uh, uh, weather data file for a particular city the weather data file is a data file which comprises uh, in vital information uh, about the meteorological data regarding the precipitation wind speed uh, rainfall data uh, and many many other uh, components like uh, relative humidity of uh, every location which for which the file has been made of almost 30 years at an interval of say half an hour uh, 30 minutes daily half an hour so there will be 48 different uh, uh, data, 48 types of uh, data uh, multiply by 365 multiply by 30 years so that much amount of data has been embedded into a weather data file whether data file can be downloaded, uh, we are uh, not uh, having a detailed session of uh, understanding of uh, this uh, EQUEST. Uh, whenever we have a day long session kind of a thing, especially for EQUEST, and we'll understand each and every integrity of that. Uh, and in that, in that case, you will find out that uh, uh, ISHRE, Indian Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Ventilation uh, and Air Conditioning Engineers, uh that is a society under the uh, registered under the society registration act they have come out with the help of uh, meteorological data department that the around 62 cities weather data files are available i have tried to send you across on the email with the help of emc that uh, all those 62 city weather data file uh, for for your laptop you can download it you can extract it and after extracting you, you have to just put it into the uh, equest uh, uh, some folder Request uh, data folder, data weather folder, and then inside that all uh, uh, weather data file, almost 64 files, 62 files are there that need to be pasted into that uh, subdirectory. I shall provide you a link for that where to paste and where to do that, but we are not going to detail of that. What the software can do for that, that is our primary requirement. So uh, I'm just uh, moving ahead with the request now. And I would like to. Uh, Present before you the another screen. So there will be a change of a screen. Uh, 
Uh, Semi, are you able to see the Equest uh, set startup options? Hello? Semi, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, are you able to see the Equest startup options? Fantastic. Uh, if it is not there, then kindly let me know so that I'll re uh, reshare it again. Okay. So, yeah. Equest is a very simple software and it is not having a illustrative kind of a approach towards the presenting the rendered image of any building. So don't expect because it's a simulation software. It's not a rendering unlike uh, uh, your uh, what you can call it uh, Revit or 3D Studio Max or Lumen Studio or or, or any of these uh, sort of uh, uh, softwares. The the in my opinion, already three percent part is just to generate the block model concept. For just to have a sync with you that whatever that you have been tried into the software, the software you understood in a, in a, in a total that only that much is uh, there. The interface, the, the 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 menus, everything is very simple in nature. Nothing lucrative, nothing very very special, nothing shiny or something like that. So uh, don't expect because it calculates much. It's it 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 does job better in in some way that it provides you information in a more pre precise form. So it is a precision calculation software rather than a presentable software. So don't expect that it's a it's a very big and very uh, huge software. Around 10,000 entries, different type of entries can be fed into the software. Some of them glimpses we'll just see to uh, in, a, in a while. Okay. So uh, how to install Equest? That's very easy. D to D to O, sorry, D O E to uh, dot com slash Equest. Uh, I'll just write it all somewhere after some time, uh, and then in that uh, uh, link. Only download the software and then next, 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 and you will see this screen. Okay, the one logo will come and nothing uh, to bother for. So installation is very easy. And then uh, uh, you will have to paste your weather data file into a particular subdirectory that I'll link also, also paste and I'll just make a thing that you should also get uh, in the next session that how to paste the information into that. <clears throat> but what to be done with the software? Just uh, have a uh, take a deep breath that it is going to start and you are going to have a very first simulation if those who have not uh, done any simulation earlier. We have got a uh, variety of uh, attendees over here. Uh, some are freshers, some are the uh, BEEE certified uh, professionals, and we have got many, many other uh, different type of officials. Uh, we welcome all of, the, uh, all of them again. Uh, that uh, just to generate a single file with a minimal amount of information in an equest that you would like to understand in say uh, next five minutes. So create a new project via wizard, okay? Create a new project instead of opening a previous. There are many previous versions are available. Many uh, samples are available, but we shall start from scratch. So uh, creating a new project via wizard. If you just press OK, we'll find out there are two wizards are there. Uh, schematic design, design wizards that is called SD wizard in short. You can just uh, jot it down on a piece of paper that these are the basic informations that you have to go along with uh, these things. So in case of a uh, new place or new area, you have to uh, you you should I, I would urge you that you should have a, a guided tour for first day. If you are if you happen to be in a city for five days ten days, at least one day you should have a guided uh, through the uh, any any of the guests uh, any of the host or any of the uh, guide or something like that. And later once you see the uh, major milestones, this is the Rajbada or this is a city center or this is a railway station or the, here it is a, a temple or a mosque or church or something like that. If you once you identify, then it is very easy for you to. Uh, uh, move around later on for the next uh, week kind of a thing in a new city. So here there are some landmarks are there. So what we have seen earlier, that is the very first, uh, uh, the menu was there and then we have chosen the create new wizard and then there is a schematic design wizard. This is called SD wizard and another, the very detailed one is called the design development wizard. So there are two wizards. We shall start with the very minimal one so that is called the SD wizard and second would be the DD wizards. You can write it down so that these are the milestone to move around in the uh, in the software. Otherwise, you you might be lost somewhere in the software, and you you have to just uh, uh, you find uh, find no way to come out that uh, where to move around that how to move back. So this is the uh, wizard which we are choosing. Uh, just click it. Okay. So there is one pop-up menu. 
and in the pop-up menu, there could be a drop-down menus are also there. In case of drop-down menus, there could be further more information. So if you see that this first pop-up menu is called first of 43. Okay, total 43 pop-up menus of this particular uh, SD wizard is there. There are multiple wizards, not, uh, multiple things are there. So there could be a number of entries are there. Project 50, suppose we would like to make a, a museum in, in uh, Thiruvanpuram. So project name is something like uh, museum. Uh, then the, there could be building type. The building types are predefined templates inside the inside the uh, software. Uh, Sebi, are you able to see the SD wizard uh, drop down menu? So uh, there could be, uh, your building could be of community center, conference con convention center, health fitness center, and lodging, manufacturing general, manufacturing higher tech, uh, something office building, high rise or mid rise, or two story office building, or religious worship place like temple, mosque, church kind of a thing, restaurant, uh, full service, or restaurant with a quick surface of fast food menu, or restaurant of bar launch, or departmental store, or retail store of many times, or it could be something like a schools or middle schools or college, university, or a storage of uncontained bag, or many, many other things are there uh, in, in the form of a variety of buildings. Usually, your all commercial buildings or different type of building. Commercial building doesn't mean those, those transact the business or sell something of that. Schools are also considered a commercial building. Why? Because except your residence or except you have tenanted your house, even hostels are also commercial places. Those are basically residential in nature. Even hotel, hospitals, schools, all have got, even the government primary school has got a commercial connection with them from the from the DISCOM. DISCOM stands for distribution companies which supply electricity to your uh, residence or to any building. So uh, commercial building means not only we, we sometimes misled with the uh, terminology over here, the commercial buildings are only which has got a mall or it has got office, nothing else. Okay, but office building means and except residence, Okay, except residence. Here the residence is also there. Why? Because if you provide a hostel kind of activity, then it is a residence kind of a thing. Then in that case, that also comes under the commercial activities. So all museum is also, though it could be a government museum, it could be a charitable museum, it could be anything, but uh, everything is has got a commercial connection over there. So whatever uh, the buildings that has got a commercial electricity connection, those are considered as commercial buildings. So I uh, hope you are uh, clear with this thing, to how to choose a, a building and why to choose from this thing. Uh, if you are not familiar with any of these type of building, then there could be unknown custom mixed use building. So you can go for that. Uh, why to choose any of uh, the list that is better because it has got a template to have a series of questions to ask from you. Like if you've got to provide information regarding a school, then it will say what is the principal room size? Okay, what is the um, assembly hall size? What is the uh, girls' com where is the girls' common room? Where is something like that? Where is the library? Suppose if you provide a museum, then it might ask you where is the storage, where is the display area. So that kind of terminology which is pertaining towards that building type of building typology will be asked in detail from you. So if you've got an office, then it will ask you where is the conference room, where is the photocopier machine room, how much is the size, and something like that. So the template has got a <coughs> building typology specific questions to be asked before you. So you need not to bother that why it is asking this question that where is the principal room in my office. So uh, you better to choose a, uh, always choose a, uh, a building of uh, a building template, which is of your nature. So uh, instead of a museum, can we go for an office building, which is possible for us? So because we are much more familiar with the office environment. So we'll go for an office building of mid rise. Okay. Then as the building, this the entire software is made in US and uh, it is being developed over there. It is a government official software which can be downloaded from the Department of uh, Energy, doe2.com. Uh, so Department of Energy, Government of US, ka hai, so you, you can find it out that uh, location set is showing either California, Title 24, all equest locations, Canadian locations, and user selected. As we do not fall into their jurisdiction, so we have selected user selected. And whether file that we would like to choose, then uh, there is a uh, there there should be a, a, a definite path, and we would like to see the path where the path is there. So path we have to select uh, from uh, our this PC, and then documents, 
and in documents you will go for uh, is equals to 3.65 version data okay this pc then your my documents and then you will find out data and in data you will find out weather folder okay this is the weather folder so first uh, my pc then uh, my documents or documents and then equest data and then in the equest data there is a subfolder called that is called weather so if you just press weather you will come across to all the 62 cities names okay chennai bikan there bhuj bhuneshwar bhopal guwahati gwalior and all that we have to go to tiruvanantapuram tiruvanantapuram is the place for us suppose your city is not there then the same technology of uh, weather effect like if you are from the coastal belt or uh, if you are from the warm and humid zone the similar uh, city you can choose otherwise you will have to generate your own data file that is also being provided to that facility also provided into request your own uh, sky cal file but you will have to go to metallurgical department you have to drop uh, download some uh, data from the metallurgical department convert it to the uh, this format and all that so instead of going to that it's very easy that uh, what a quite similar city you can choose uh, similar uh, weather city data and then uh, you can just go ahead so we have chosen the thiruvananthapuram uh, and we'll just open it so it will choose the warm and humid zone, uh, which is the uh, uh, Kerala state uh, uh, weather type. So there are uh, five weather types in the entire country. Uh, first one is basically hot and dry. Hot and dry is basically pertaining towards Rajasthan, the western part of M M MP and uh, most part of the Gujarat. So and uh, and and uh, uh, majority part of Maharashtra. So that is warm and humid. No, that is that is hot and dry. Warm and humid is basically the coast, entire coastal line and the northeastern part of uh, uh, country. Apart from that, there is a composite climate, which is uh, my place composite, the central part of India. So that is something like uh, uh, some part of Maharashtra or some 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 uh, uh, some part of Madhya Pradesh kind of thing. So that is a average kind of weather, and there is a pleasant kind of weather that is called composite climate. That you understood uh, itself, but it's repeating it so that you will understand. So composite climate, sorry, um, the, the the temperate climate is basically pertaining to Bangalore, where you need not to put any fan kind of a thing or Uti kind of a thing or Kodai Canal or something like that. It's though it's a, it could be a hill station, it could be cold climate also, but it's a temperate climate. And cold climate is something like Sri Sri Shillong and uh, eastern, uh, the most part of that uh, uh, northern uh, Himalayan base. So uh, those those are uh, basically uh, uh, fifth kind of uh, weather in our country. So weather data file for Tiruvannamalai we have chosen. It is asking so many other questions. So building area it is asking for twelve thousand uh, sorry one lakh twenty five thousand. Don't mislead with the comma because it's a uh, American term. They don't put comma after three places. They put comma after two places. So it's a one lakh twenty five thousand square foot area of four floors. We can change it to five floors. Okay, we can change it to 125 to 150. 1 lakh 50,000 square foot building. Okay, in Tiruvanthapuram. Or we can choose many other things like for our building might be constructed in say something like after two years. So we'll choose 2030-23 instead of 2021. Because we are designing building. So it will be constructed in a year or so something and it will occupy after two years. So there you can just provide information. So many information you can change it. Whatever information you change, that becomes red. So whatever that is green, that is a default value. Any default value that has been displayed can be changed with the help of uh, your your cursor and uh, keyboard. So this is first. Now next screen. So it will ask you a series of questions. What kind of building footprint it is? The office building could be a rectangular one. It could be a trapezoidal one. It could be something like uh, L shaped. It could be T shaped, or it could be something like a uh, U shaped. Okay, suppose we take a U shaped building as of now. Okay, or uh, simply uh, if you would like to, very simple, it shouldn't be triangle for in initial stage, go for a rectangle one. Okay, but in case of rectangle, you can change the dimension. Suppose it is a, uh, a square kind of thing, then you can change 173, 173, so you can just place uh, 270 and something like uh, 80. Okay, now it is asking for floor to floor height. So floor to floor height is 13 feet and floor to ceiling height is 9 feet because of the 
something in central uh, lifting system is there. But we have got a VRF system kind of thing, so we don't need to have a nine feet. We will be having around uh, eleven feet. So I can change it. The topmost could be a, which is a pattern uh, in, in usually uh, Kerala and other places. Uh, so pitch roof could be have an inclination of twenty five degree. Otherwise, you can just change any inclination degree also. And the projection beyond your walling of that uh, pitch roof is around two feet. You can change it that also. Apart from that, you can change the north of the building also. So this is facing north over here. Logical north, you can change to west. Or otherwise, there are a variety of uh, different uh, <coughs> 22 f hat, half degree kind of a pattern that is north northwest northwest north northwest west west southwest and all that that has been mentioned over here. Suppose we choose west over here. So only the north changes, not the building changes. Okay. And then multiple other things are there. You don't have to bother. You have to just ignore the additional uh, information which is not being understood or which is not concerned, better of concern for initial learning exercise. You just ignore them. Whatever the default value, that is best set suited value that has already been chosen by the software. But you are able to change the floor to floor height, floor to ceiling height. Suppose you would like to change the floor to floor height as from 13 feet to again 14 feet. We would be able to do it. So that flexibility is provided by the software. Now next is clean. Then uh, this is the roof surface. This is above grade walls, and all these things are there. So here, uh, what we can propose is that for roof surface, uh, that uh, roof surface could be six inch thick concrete. Okay, and there are ma many kind of insulations are there because uh, we don't feel the extreme weather as such because we are acclimatized to uh, a certain level that. Uh, uh, whatever that uh, uh, the weather is there, we are adaptive to that. So adaptive thermal comfort is a concept which is a new concept which is uh, based on various lifestyle of a particular geographical location, locations people. And based on that thing, suppose uh, a very heated environment of say something like uh, 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 37 degrees comfortable for the Jessel Bear person in summer. Could be a ridiculous for a European person, could be a ridiculous for even for uh, Mumbai cars. Okay, so uh, uh, the thermal comfort is basically observed uh, uh, with the help of uh, a, a psychometric chart uh, or belonging to the region based on out of some sample surveys that has been done on that and based on that thing that uh, that uh, comfort is uh, considered and you will consider that uh, comfort is a completely subjective term, but you have to provide some sort of objective because you travel in a uh, railway coach, an air conditioned coach. That half of the people say that it is very cold, and half of the people say that it's it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's very hot. So somebody is shivering, somebody is feeling hot, somebody is something like that. But uh, attendant has to uh, work out on a certain threshold limit of some technical uh, data that has to feed feed in. Like it is a 24 degree to 27 degree, some some range uh, he has to set. So again, uh, the subjectivity should be met in terms of objectivity or for the at least 80, 80 to 90 percent people that this zone is uh, comfortable to them. So that adoptive thermal comfort, depending on the geographical location or on various other parameters has to be understood. And based on that thing, some insulation has to be provided to the to the roof as well as to the wall. So I'm not going into detail of insulation as of now. We'll just march it after some time. Above grade walls, grade stands for plinth over here. Okay, so here uh, I'll be having a, a wall of say something like eight inch CMU. Okay, or otherwise I can create my own wall. So are you ready for uh, sparing two, three minutes to understand the how wall compositions are being created in the software? Will take hardly five minutes max. So instead of that, we'll just generate instead of an eight inch cement mortar unit, like a traditional wall of eight inches thickness. Instead of that, we'll just generate the layer by layer uh, wall to the software. So what it is asking for, it's asking for create new construction. Then what is the uh, new construction wall component assembly we can give? Wall assembly during learning, we can call it during learning. Okay, during learning. Wall assembly during learning. This is our component. Okay, this is name of our building component. Now it is asking wall assembly during le learning will be constituted of uh, various uh, layers of various materials. Uh, a specific method uh, has been mentioned in terms of library entry. So we have got a library. So we'll choose a specific library entry and we'll find out the category. So as we have uh, just uh, seen that the innermost could be uh, something like uh, uh, gypsum plaster. 
just some plasterboard of thickness that has been mentioned. We can just change it from half inch to say something quarter inch, or it could be one inch. So it could be quarter inch kind of a gypsum board we have selected. Otherwise, we can select the thickness of our own. Suppose that is not been mentioned over here. <coughs> we have got a different material of other thickness, then we can provide the thickness over here. We can provide the conductivity also and everything if we would like to change. That is the innermost layer. Then the second layer of our outer wall could be again from the library entry and we can just select it from uh, here and we'll just go for a brick. Traditional brick of four inches that is work out. OK, so we'll just common brick four inches thickness. Then another one could be a uh, library entry. There could be a insulation. Insulation could be a polystyrene. It could be a polystyrene or it could be air gap also. There could be an air gap also. So if it it is air, then that has to be mentioned uh, that air is there. OK, otherwise we are just taking polystyrene. Polystyrene, again, thickness is there. We can go for around three inch thickness up to three inch thickness or two inch thickness, depending on the location. And then uh, from here, I'll put another uh, layer of uh, AAC block. Uh, AAC block is basically concrete block of lightweight. That is the 30 pond or a concrete block of lightweight. You can just choose it from here. And on the top of uh, at the last outside, I will just having a mort cement mortar. Cement mortar, we will have to find out it is available. Uh, 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 uh. Cement mortar, yeah. Cement mortar of one inch thickness outside. And again, we can have a stone cladding. Stone cladding or a caustical tile, okay, or asbestos vinyl, or asphalt, or uh, building paper, or roofing, or carpet, or cement mortar, many, many things. Clay tile we can just uh, put outside our uh, wall or we can just go for a stone cladding. It could be a stucco plaster, it could be terrazzo plaster, it could be wood. Air layer we have just seen that that is also available. Then the stone. So last finishes, outside finishes, we have just uh, started from inside and various layers we have just created. So it is giving you the R value. And this R value or the U value, one upon R value, that should be uh, uh, minimal. The U value should be minimal. R value should be higher. So this value should be checked from the code. OK, so uh, as per that, we can just see that how much this resistance is increasing. If you are increasing, provide the information and you can check it. The polystyrene, if you are changing from two inch to three inch. Or four inch, it is coming out to 19. Suppose it is like a half inch, then it is 4.7. So you can vary, you can choose a variety over here. So, so as the thickness of the insulation cost much, so you have to simulate the, what is the cost of the project uh, implication versus the uh, resistance of the uh, wall assembly. So more the, the better the insulation is there, more is the resistance. So better to have a uh, uh, variety of different of things depending on your climatology or uh, if your, uh, your wall is facing east or west, then the, your uh, insulation should be higher. If it is facing uh, south, then the insulation could be normal or there, there should be a chajja over the all windows and in, during, uh, towards the south. And towards north, there no insulation is needed. Even a single glazing uh, would be sufficient enough for a, just a, a DG kind of insulation that is enough at the north. So uh, variety of thickness of variety of uh, walls can be taken with the variety of various assembly units. So uh, one assembly you have chosen and we are done with that. So it has taken that wall assembly custom layer by layer. So instead of just uh, having a brickwork, we have just chosen to be a more efficient wall inside our building. Now the office has got a uh, basement. No, so we can add a basement to our office. So here there is a provision below grade above grade. Five floors are there Be below grade one one uh, below grade means uh, below plinth. One floor is there. So this is the number of floors So we can add over here. So we can uh, having a back and forth exercise. We can uh, change any dimension at any point of time at any of the pop up screens. So uh, Suppose exposure is something earth contact. If basement is there, you, it is an over parking garage. 
Okay, so if it is over parking garage, then the con construction of concrete could be six inch thickness. Otherwise, you can choose from that whatever the thickness is there. It is supposed to be four inches. Uh, it has been designed in four inches thickness of concrete. Then it is being displayed over here. So now, if you just come across to may many other things below grade wall construction walls, six inch concrete, it could be something like eight inch thick concrete in the basement walls. And then insulations and everything in detail, like you can provide the carpet finish kind of a thing. If a carpet with the padding or it could be a stone tile finish that you can just provide information to the software. Here, if you are going ahead, then the top floor ceiling, the ceiling has got a uh, drywall finish or plaster finish or acoustical tile. Acoustical tiles will usually grid tile of gypsum or a plain tile of gypsum or it, it is a plain gypsum ceiling kind of a thing or any other material that could be a calcium silicate board or anything else. So uh, layer by layer construction of acoustical tile that has been mentioned. Ceiling wise that has been mentioned. Wall type is of frame. So it could be a mass. Usually uh, in case of offices, there could be a mass wall. Mass wall means the brickwork wall or there could be an aluminum partition or a wooden partition. So it could be a frame kind of thing. So the frame that has been mentioned, the floor wise, the interior finish that could be a carpet or it could be a stone tile or uh, it could be a mm, floor is of uh, uh, four inch concrete or six inch concrete that information you can just provide so there are a variety of information that is being asked and you can refine your building model providing a better and better uh, uh, design input into the into the software whatever you are intending to choose any any building parameter okay so these parameters are to be fed in a meticulous form otherwise the software will take its own course with the default values so the our precision will uh, uh, result will depend on the keying data. So it works on the principle of uh, garbage in, garbage out of always. Every software does like that. So uh, if you if you want to be more precise in any terms, then it is better to provide the 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 information which is being known to you. It's just a keying entry, just selecting something in the drop down menu, putting some of the data with the help of keyboard, uh, and then you can march it ahead. Apart from that, you can just provide a describe to door type, door type lock in entry. So there could be a front door that could be a glass door. It should be something like suppose it is in west, then it, it is one door. Uh, in the east side, there is no door. Suppose north side, it has got one door. Or south side, it has got no door. Then uh, you got something like opaque doors for stores and other places uh, in the out, outer shell of your building on the ground floor. So it could be opaque door. So again, it could be something like uh, there's no door in the west side and there could be one door or two door in the north side. Or there's one door, there's no door in the south. So you can change it. Now the the um, first one, the airlock entry goal. There could be seven feet height. It could be something like eight feet height. Or width wise, this is five, uh, six feet. It can be reduced down to five feet. And the construction of uh, this uh, airlock entry door could be something like uh, uh, sing instead of single one, it could be something like uh, clear tint. And then glass type you can also change from green, bronze, gray, clear, iron, something like that. And the frame type could be aluminum one or it could be a uh, vinyl flooring. These days, UPVC windows and doors are in prevalence. And the frame width instead of a uh, uh, three inch, it is something like 4.5 inches. So you can change any of the data which has been pertaining towards this uh, uh, any any of the building parameter. Secondly, the small door, store door could be of uh, say something like four feet wide by say something like uh, uh, four feet. No, sorry, not four feet height is too low. It's a seven feet door multiplied by say something like four feet wide. And the steel horror floor, it could be a wooden door. So wooden solid door, you can just flush door, you can choose. Okay. So this is the way you can just incorporate your entry to be in a more much more uh, precise form. Okay. Now next to that. Uh, uh, how much information we provided for the door? The similar amount can be provided to the windows. Apart from that, if you just go exterior window sheets, overhangs, uh, if you like to have a chajas, it could be for the top floor only, it could be for all windows. So it could be uh, in the west side, it could be of say two feet, east side, it could be of two feet, 
and the north side there is no uh, chajja is required in case of south it is supposed to be four feet fin wise in the vertical fins uh, along with the uh, window then it could be 0.5 feet in uh, west 0.5 feet in the east. next so uh, roof skylight it is asking that you would like to have a, any kind of a skylight because it is a sloping roof so there is no need to put in a skylight on over here otherwise you can go for that now the computer is asking you to uh, changing of the activity uh, areas or location like the office that is open plan means like open tables or uh, half cubicles office for executive private that is called cabin uh, corridor means uh, circulation space Lobby means uh, where you can have a uh, reception or waiting on the first floor or every floor. Restroom means toilets. Conference room means uh, the, the conference person, uh, sorry, console area. And the mechanical electrical room is like photocopy machine or something like that. And copy room is also similar of that. So you can just change any area to any area. There are many other options are there. Otherwise, everything has got a custom. So in case of unknown, you can just give any any name to that. Okay. So the percentage area is, has been mentioned over here, like 40% is the area of the of open office. So, and 30% is the basically this thing. So we'll just shift it to 60% is the uh, cubical area, open half cubical area or open area. And then 10% for the, uh, we have got a Japanese office. So we have got a, uh, around say something like 10% of the private cabins or uh, usual cabins, full, full height cabins. So this is there. So you can change it uh, to it to an extent. The, uh, Thing is that the answer should always be 100 percent the com the totaling of all these things should be 100 percent and then next to that so uh, design occupancy how many uh, a person requires in in, uh, in this area as a 150 square feet per person so uh, we can change it to something like if you've got a uh, restricted place set to run the room then we can go for say 100 square feet for a person instead of 225 we can go for 180 kind of thing so everything is changeable okay where lighting that has been given. So here we can provide the lighting load. So what is lighting load? That is uh, lighting power density is the new term for that. The, the amount of uh, wattage required for per square foot in the entire building of that particular uh, location, office or corridor wise. You can provide this LPD over here. How to generate LPD? That is the task which we'll learn in the after lunch session, second session, the day lighting simulation for ECBC. So the data for this, will come from another software, not from this equal software. And the task light is also there. So all these information will be uh, furnished from uh, another software and output of that software will be fed inside this thing. So we'll learn that exercise also. We'll come back to this screen again when we're, we are uh, through with the daylight, daylighting simulation pattern. Okay, so this is there. So hopefully you, got, you are getting it. Then uh, unoccupied areas load and other things. So there are uh, the schedule wise that how much time the office runs, the office, runs from not from 8 a.m. Suppose it starts at 10 a.m. Uh, and uh, closes by so something like uh, uh, 6 p.m. OK, occupancy usually that that you can just provide over here information. Apart from that, uh, what kind of HVAC, uh, HVAC stands for heating, uh, ventilation and air conditioning? Uh, what kind of system that is there? All detailing pertaining to that. So we are not going to understand the the uh, detailing about the comfort system and control because today's topic is basically for the uh, envelope optimization. So we have seen the uh, variety of envelope, uh, envelope optimization uh, parameters, how to choose that and how to just uh, simulate with that and how to get the result for that. With that, we'll like to understand. Then uh, there are many, many other things we are not going into detail of that. Uh, we'll just uh, close it as if as it is and we'll finish it off. We are fed up to provide so much information. There are multiple information that is asking, and then we are not uh, having any idea about what to feed inside that. So we are just marching ahead with the uh, all existing values. Okay, so domestic hot water reading or and everything is there. Then the project information, basic information like uh, it is the address is something like uh, 45, 35 Thomas. Cities through and through. Honor name is Thomas. 
something like that. And we'll finish it off. So we have tried to generate our model. And the model has been generated. The model has been generated. OK, the model has been generated in such a way that it is providing the plan of that model. OK, so uh, if you see to it, then uh, you will just see that 3D of that model only the basement and first two ground floor first floor has been shown and the topmost floor is shown and the only the sloping is there just uh, hold down the control key press the left mouse button key and just you can move your model only shows only the basic uh, block model it is not a rendered kind of model because the work of the software is to just uh, ascertain a right value for you what is the right value that we are going to understand in next uh, slides so it is very easy control uh, someday we'll see that uh, each and every command and everything of that we are just uh, marching ahead with the familiarity of the software today control and right mouse key and then we can zoom it zoom out but nothing more detail can be seen because it, it generates a concept job, block model so this is the basement and this is the ground floor this is the sill height this is the uh, lintel height and this is the roof level and then again similar kind of thing so only two floors above basement and then subsequently all four floors are not seen because it is a block model and the topmost floor is seen so you can just see that this kind of building this the length and this width and the sloping room is understood well by the software now what is what text next is that once you generated a model then you can simulate it simulate it means what it will provide it will generate the information uh, values to a to a logical conclusion and it will show you that in uh, Thiruvananthapuram, if an office building of uh, uh, five floors with a basement and with this much amount of air conditioning and information furnished by you, if you just provide it to the software, it is always ask you that uh, uh, you have to save it your uh, whatever you have done because in case of simulation, by every 10 minutes you have to just press Control S. Otherwise, your data might be lost because uh, a computer might hang because of the heavy uh, data processing uh, load in, uh, onto that. So I'll take a sip of water. Meanwhile, it simulates. Oh, it has simulated so fast. I couldn't sip even a gl uh, glass of water. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so it's wonderful. Uh, we'll see the summary report. OK, we'll just press this one. We'll just. Oh, fantastic. What is being displayed before us is basically electrical consumption in terms of kilowatt hour. And we have seen that kilowatt hour is basically technical terms. In usual term, we call it a unit of electricity. How much of unit of electricity has been consumed in your residence for the last month? So around 150, 200, 250, depending on the size of the uh, your <clears throat> residence and occupancy and type of uh, air conditioning you have got. And number of air conditioning you got, or number of comfort system you got, and number of heating load you have got. So there are a variety of different loads are there, and every uh, is thing is energyless. So space cooling that is for air conditioning, uh, then the refrigeration we haven't provided any information that we have got a refrigerator in our uh, office or something like a tea coffee vending machine is there or something like that. So it is not providing that information. So you have to just uh, incorporate the, the as maximum as uh, details into the software so that it can generate a uh, immense amount of fine data for you ventilation fans for exhaust uh, in the toilets pumps and auxiliary like it is assuming that you have got a underground sump or bore well kind of a thing and then uh, miscellaneous equipment which whatever that has been assumed by task lighting and area lights 26 then how much it is coming out to be it is coming out to be in the month of January 146 multiplied by 1000. Unit 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, lakh. 1 lakh 46,000 units have been consumed in the month of January of a building of comprising of sixth floor in Tiruvannampuram of 280 feet by, say, 80 feet. Okay, so this is being generated in the month of uh, January, and then you will see. 
that in the month of February it is little little lesser. In case of March it is more. In case of May June it is it is it is being displayed over here. Okay, so total year wise, if you see January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, December, it comes out to be one eight six eight. One eight six eight. Ignore the point nine over here. So eighteen lakhs units. Eighteen lakh sixty-eight thousand units will be generated once an electrical meter has been installed in a probable building of say whatever size with information which we have provided with. So, eighteen lakh sixty-eight thousand units will be will be consumed in a single year divided by what we have given one lakh fifty thousand. That is the square feet area divided by a square meter. Again, divided by ten point seven six four to generate a. Uh, per square meter consumption. So suppose that comes out to be say 169, then my building cannot be constructed at uh, Thiruvananthapuram. I will not be allowed to uh, construct. Then I have to put more insulation. I have to put more things. I have to make uh, my things more efficient. And then suppose it comes out to be uh, lesser than that. What is the threshold limit? Then uh, my building will be uh, permitted to construct. It. So now onwards, whenever the ECBC compliance will be there. Whenever uh, uh, engineer, architect, or collection of uh, combination of these consultants will submit a joint uh, uh, application for uh, constructing a building, uh, then uh, a certificate of B Triple E uh, certified energy person who will evaluate this building on this matter. Along with that, almost 60 more documents in addition to what traditionally we have just uh, given the single uh, sheet or uh, two sheet paper of plan elevation and section, two sections elevation and uh, two staircase cut section and something like that for granting building permit or just a certificate of uh, uh, stability, uh, structural stability and other things we have provided. In addition to that, you will have to provide this information, this sheet, not only this sheet, but a detailed sheet of, uh, if you just see, detailed sheet, then uh, detailed sheet of the simulation. So we have seen only one sheet, but it generates uh, a detailed sheet of say something like, uh, we'll see how much that is. Uh, it is a, That was single sheet we have seen. Now view detailed simulation output file. So detailed output file is for the baseline design that is just showing. Baseline design, if you just open it, then it is showing a 340 page report. Complete detailed technical report about the building. So out of that, what report is required by the authority? There could be 10 different reports will be required. So these are the reports which will be required, and then these reports have to be uh, printed on a piece of paper or uh, take a PDF and put a digital signature of yours and can be submitted. So something like uh, what I presume is that in addition to the earlier drawings and DCR formats, almost 60 enclosures will be required to be presented to the authority before um, uh, seeking a building permit or just for, uh, along with the application of seeking building permit. After evaluating all that thing or just putting uh, things in proper shape, the building permission will be granted at the plinth level, at the building completion level, at the occupancy level, post occupancy. All these uh, parameters will be reviewed uh, remotely as well as uh, at site. And then uh, these buildings will be allowed to be uh, operated. So this is the law. And then how to law to be incorporated? Then you have to generate a model. You have to provide information about your uh, everything in detail putting all uh, your consultants uh, at initial level uh, to provide information about feeding everything in the software. Either do you do it by yourself or you can get it uh, done from somebody else. Problem of getting uh, from somebody else is that you, you enjoy the expertise of that guy, but what happens if he's a bu very busy guy, he has got a 10 different project of similar kind of variety of thing, and you are, you, are in the, uh, you are in the very hurry or you don't have got a time, then in that case, you will depend on that outsource person. So better not to depend on the outsource person. Try to uh, improve ourselves to generate our own model right from very initial, very low one, and then we can incorporate from a uh, very low to very higher amount of bigger size of project by ourselves only. So that is called capacity building. Uh, capacity building means uh, whatever the knowledge we have acquired, 
all that knowledge expertise the type of material everything which is known to us in addition to that what is more uh, available in terms of uh, uh, from the resources given to us or from the software uh, display only we can provide better solution than anybody ex ex expert because whatever we know for our clients budget or our departmental budget or for uh, uh, for for the native uh, things available our outsource person cannot be better than that but unless and until unless we go through this procedure of understanding uh, we would not be able to uh, do justice uh, with our job and we'll try to remain dependent on somebody else and whatever he thinks you do not know what he had thought for your project and whatever they, he has or she has provided to you you will depend on that so better to be a, a, a solely dependent person after acquiring knowledge about this software the software uh, detailing knowledge so it's very detailed in nature i told you that more than uh, 10,000 different para para parameters you have to choose from. But that has been compartmented in a very decent fashion. And you, if you just move out in a certain fashion, then you would uh, love to uh, have uh, results from this software because it gives you immense amount of data that uh, how much the inf uh, information can be uh, changed very easily. And the data can provide you information in a very quick uh, uh, of uh, just uh, uh, eye, something like that. So uh, variety of information can be uh, derived from here, from variety of this thing. It is very much in detail, so we are, we are not going to tell. But from where, how things have to be uh, gathered, that I'm trying to show you. So uh, report format we have seen. We have seen that this building uh, simulation one page report is there, and how to uh, calculate the API. And the API can be uh, published in the entire state uh, periodically every three years or five years. And whatever that threshold limit of that particular building typology can be asserted from 180, 1868 multiplied by uh, 1000 divided by the total built up area that we have fed into the software that is 150,000 converted into a square meter divided by 10.764 will give you a certain number. The number can be matched with the, uh, the threshold limit of the um, EMC center uh, threshold limit. And then if it is within the permissible limit, your building can be permitted to be constructed. So if it is not that, you have to change your building and develop type, size, glazing, everything. And then you have to see that by virtue of changing, we have seen that uh, by virtue of changing the, the, the insulation in the wall, there is an ample amount of change was observed. So suppose uh, here, I'm just moving back and then we will see that how the building parameter changes. So instead of this uh, orientation, we'll just note it down from here. Every time we'll have to note it down uh, on a piece of paper that how much was the information regarding the electrical consumption. Electrical consumption is not to understand the electricity of a building. It's just an indices that how much uh, additional auxiliary power you have to put in if you are not designing a building up to the mark or as per the codal provisions. So we'll just note it down on a piece of paper that uh, that uh, uh, this one eight six eight point nine multiply by 1000 units are consumed in, in this fashion. Up now, we would like to change certain parameters. Okay, we would like to change the building place. Then we'll go to this location, this schematic design wizard, SD wizard, this is DD wizard, this is energy efficiency measure wizard. So there are multiple wizards are there. We are just at the initial stage only. So schematic design wizard, yes. It is always asked to save the project. And now here, we would like to change the uh, position. So now where to change? General information. Building was placed at Tirun from. Now we will change to location of Ahmedabad. Ahmedabad and open. Okay. Why I'm changing uh, with a variety of different locations? I'm not changing within the uh, Kerala state uh, zone, but I'm changing it uh, nationwide with a different location. So different conditions there. Five floor building of one lakh fifty thousand square feet with a one basement. So we will just finish it. I'm changing one parameter only, and see that whether uh, the building can could be observed by the software in a very decent fashion. What about Ahmedabad uh, file that I've chosen? It 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 has got a uh, information about the Ahmedabad metallurgical data for the last thirty years uh, at an interval of uh, half an hour. So immense amount of data has been applied on the building. Now you see the uh, very fast it has chosen the same building which is placed in the very same fashion in Ahmedabad with the same parameter instead of Tiranpuram to uh, Ahmedabad. It comes out to be 1748.8. Okay, so the, the 
almost you will find out that almost uh, one lakh unit uh, of electricity is consumed less though it is basically uh, uh, you can call it uh, hot and dry and we are warm and humid so warm and humid is consuming more as compared to hot and dry so that we have to just ascertain that what kind of parameter we have to choose for our place which is more preferable for our place so that the building should consume less now again we would like to go for a different uh, climate zone so again we'll go to written description mode again we'll change the location it is asking to save the file uh, same file i am using for uh, another location uh, instead of oh it was for alabad i have chose wrong it was uh, for alabad okay i am going for uh, now now ahmedabad ahmedabad is not there yeah ahmedabad is there so instead of a uh, composite climate i'll go for ahmedabad now which is hot and dry now simulation and we report which simulation provides you that much quick uh, information the revit the 3d studio max or state pro or e tapes 1732 1732.7 for amdavar i am noting it down okay multiply by 1000 units so 17 lakhs 32000 units now i'll place the building in a different place hopefully you are getting the procedure how fast we can change it so instead of amdavar i'll go to say Shillong, Imphal, or Guwahati, or Gwalior, or Jaisalmer, or Kota, or Lucknow, or Panji, or Raipur, Shillong, and then I'll finish. Press the finish button. Now it is imposing all. information of weather data to the building and now very quickly it is trying to simulate and it will give you result for shillong how much it is how much less it is only 12 lakh units 12 lakh 94 1000.8 for shillong okay so with the variety of uh, uh, location change it it gives you different result means it is processing something and it uh, take my words it is meticulously chalking out everything in very much detail and what could be the probable electrical consumption based on all windows doors uh, roofing the walling material whatever that has been you you just fed in based on that thing that has been there okay so this is this is the Uh, one of the cases now again we'll go back to our place that is tiruvananthapuram to the software again it will require 2 minutes we'll go to tiruvananthapuram again okay and then here uh, we would like to change something we would like to change the instead of plan north we'll just change it to north and see some changes is there merely by changing the orientation so earlier was 1868.9 i change the orientation of building now instead of this north i just place it across this thing so now simulate it and your result summary now see 1802 1802.9 multiply by 1000 so it comes out to be instead of 1868000 units it is coming out to be 1862 units so almost 66000 units have been uh, reduced merely by changing the orientation of the building 
geographically location we have seen we have changed the orientation of the building now we can change the insulation of the building okay so here 18 uh, 02 yes note it down okay now we see over here this one it is asking to save every time and now we'll make certain changes to our building in case of envelope so roof wise there is no insulation is there we have provided insulation of say something like four inch abruptly we are providing information here we will providing more insulation something like this insulation okay uh, now in case of custom to layer by layer we'll just go for uh, wall assembly and it is in, in detail it will ask that uh, what need to be changed so here polystyrene instead of three inch we are providing say something like four inches okay and then uh, uh, okay something like this now done for this and then uh, next to that uh, interior insulation we are providing something like this or uh, this need not to be changed now uh, fall ceiling has got a metal stud and we'll just providing a wooden standard and then ceiling has got uh, something like uh, insulation over here uh, our 18 bit or no board it has got again insulation here carpet with no pad the carpet with pad the with rubber pad okay and rigid insulation we are providing with something half one and a half inch insulation over here we are just making a changes in the building envelope okay so here uh, instead of single clear tint we are providing double guard here okay and then uh, wallet so, uh, solid core flush door is okay over here in case of window it's a double clear instead of that we will provide some certain like uh, a different glass double clear either like we can triple low e suppose we provide over here again triple low e we are changing the glass type we are taking taking the windows type okay so if we are changing so much things instead of aluminum we would like to go for a line frame of window exterior window okay here we are, instead of aluminum we are going for vinyl okay some the 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 chajjas which we have provided over here in the west uh, it is instead of west we are providing something like two inches in case of south it is four inches or five feet suppose next next so suppose we would like to change over here the lighting load and plug load also then the effect would be there i'm not changing much thing i'll change a little bit about the glazing i have changed little about the door i have changed little about the uh, the insulations and then i'll just uh, just do it here itself i'm done with that so i'll just close it and i'll just simulate once again so whatever that was there in terms of 1802.5 should be observed by us <coughs> in a different way. So how much that should come? It should be reduced, of course. It is coming out to 1681. 1681. So almost uh, <coughs> uh, One lakh uh, twenty thousand units have been saved with the help of uh, one lakh twenty thousand units. Means uh, at our place uh, or at Rajasthan or at North India, where the ten rupees to a unit of electricity is charged by the discom, almost uh, ten lakhs of rupees can be saved every year. And if the cost of insulation and putting all these materials say something like sixteen lakhs of rupees, so within one and a half year the, that can be uh, uh, rectified. Now, uh, what you have to compare the EPI from a standard building to the uh, standard building to uh, to your building. So, in that case, you will have to generate two models. One model specifically with all the data provided as per the uh, Kerala State ECBC code, and another model with your whatever uh, you would like to put in, whatever wall you would like to put in, or something like that. You have to compare both of them. That is called parametric run. 
So with the help of parametric run, which is an advanced stage of this software, you can just work it out that uh, what uh, with, with the help of baseline, with, with respect to baseline, whatever you information you provide over here with variety of components, which is the most beneficial for you and how much amount of cost that has been incurred in that, if you provide information to the software, it will generate a life cycle cost and the payback period and everything in detail for you. And that those reports can be had with the help of detailed version of this software. So that was the elementary exercise to understand about this eQuest software. You can save your file and you can just exit uh, from the software. And whenever you come back, you can just uh, reframe your uh, things. So uh, the software has got so much details to be uh, addressed with. And with the help of that, you can just simulate your own building model. That is a mandatory also, and uh, that is not a voluntary choice or something. If the, the building falls under the category of ECBC, Kerala Estate ECBC, all the upcoming buildings will be liable on that. Apart from that, if any extension to the, any campus, like if it have got a 100 years old university which has got uh, 26 buildings, and suppose 27th building has to be constructed, then in that case, 27th building has to be uh, as per the ECBC code. So uh, whatever the old is there, that that is the retrofit policy is not in place as of now, uh, like uh, what we have got for vehicles very recently. Okay, but uh, sooner or later you will come across, uh, say after two, three years, four years down, down the line, that the ECBC for the existing building retrofit will also be there, or uh, performance achieved trade practice kind of thing that will be there. So uh, another different code that is called. Uh, Eco Nivas Sahita or ENS in short, that is on the way that has been launched by the government, that is totally separate vertical of Bureau of Energy Efficiency for residential buildings. Okay, so again, the, what you see on the uh, video screen of your four wheelers these days, that is called fast tech. The similar kind of eco label will be displayed like uh, what you see on the refrigerator, that one star to five star rating uh, labels, that is eco label for residences as well. And soon that code will also be mandatory after some time. So these are the new retrofits. These are the new smart city procedures. These are the new energy efficient procedures that will be envisaged by various softwares uh, uh, nationwide, state-wise, or something like uh, at uh, ULB uh, site. Or you would be able to see your uh, daily consumption of electricity or performance of your building uh, on, on your uh, app on your mobile itself. So that is the all new technologies which are on the way. And uh, beauty is that everything will be compulsory. So everybody will have to follow the, uh, the, the norms for that. Thank you very much, every one of you, for patiently listening. Hope you enjoyed the session, first of all, though it could be a little technical as well as a new information regarding the software. But hopefully, you got through a, a glimpse of that, at, at least touch and feel of that software. Uh, in the later portion, if it is possible, uh, if, if you can just uh, Download your software. If it is easy for you, we'll just have a 10, 15 minute hands on exercise also for your software. But it is very difficult to uh, uh, to uh, co correlate coordinates. So if it is permissible by EMC to log in from your mobile as well as on from your laptop. So you can see the things on your mobile and you can just uh, practice on your laptop. If it is feasible, then we, we can work it out. Sometimes that is workable, sometimes that is not. So if it is permissible by uh, EMC, we can do that. Otherwise, we'll see the daylight simulation for ECBC. Thank you once again for uh, having your patience for this uh, understanding this thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of EMC and EEB cell. We'll, we'll join again. Yeah, we can join at uh, 2 p.m. No? after lunch. Yeah, right. Okay, okay.